When we think of dinosaurs, we tend to picture very large terrestrial animals, perhaps something akin to the Tyrannosaurus or the mighty Diplodocus. These reptiles were, however, an extremely diverse group throughout the Mesozoic Era, and by the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous, had taken on a whole host of tiny woodland dwelling forms, which, in part, resembled the dragons of humanity's folklore and legend. To take a walk through a Mesozoic woodland in, say, China, would open up your ears and eyes to bizarre calls, vibrant colours, and small shadows darting through the treetops. In today's video, we will be meeting some of these spectacular animals within these groups, the Scansoriopterygids and Dromaeosaurs that took to the trees, and in some cases, the skies. We will cover these animals species by species, examining what makes these little feathered dragons both unique and important within the fossil record. When we study the ancient past, I'm reminded that staying connected to the sounds around us has always been something that matters, whether then or now. That's why I can rely on Raycon's essential open earbuds. That's right, this video is sponsored by Raycon. Whether I'm listening to lectures, editing voiceovers, or diving into a podcast about the latest fossil discovery, they make the experience clearer, sharper, and more immersive. Raycon's essential open earbuds deliver crystal clear sound while keeping my ears open to the world around me, almost like hearing both the roar of a modern city and the distant echoes of a prehistoric world all at the same time. With multi-point connectivity, I can stay connected to both my laptop and my phone, switching easily between research and relaxation. Thanks to the flexible ear hook and the open ear build, they sit naturally on my ears and stay comfortable all day long. I've been using the black pair, something about the shade feels fresh, like uncovering a new fossil layer after hours of careful excavation. The features that stand out the most for me are the 36 hours of battery life with the case, and the open ear design, which is essential when I'm out walking or travelling. It keeps me aware of my surroundings, while still letting me enjoy my content. Raycon quality rivals that of the big premium audio brands, but at half the price. That's why more than 3 million people already use them, supported by a 30 day happiness guarantee. I use them every day, and I think you'll find they fit naturally into your own routine as well. So if you'd like to support this channel and upgrade your listening experience, click on the link in the description, or go to buyraycon.com slash dinosaur open to get 20% off site wide for their back to school sale. That's buyraycon.com slash dinosaur open for 20% off. Thank you Raycon for sponsoring today's video. If there was one dinosaur known to science that closely resembled a dragon, this would be it. Despite being only a little bigger than a modern magpie, Yi Chi was one of the most unique theropods of the entire Mesozoic on account of its peculiar wings. While most small theropods had forelimbs that were covered in a layer of feathers, Yi Chi's were covered, at least for the most part, in skin making its wings much more like a bat's than a bird's. Scientists know this as a result of Yi Qi's fossils being preserved with what clearly resembles the wrinkles of folded skin in parts of the animal's body that would otherwise be feathered. While the dinosaur's digits would have been elongated, most of them played little part in forming the bulk of the animal's wing. The membrane would have stretched between the wrist and the animal's flank, supported by a long styliform bone that provided structure and integrity to the wing, ensuring it did not tear or break easily. While Yi Chi could leave the ground, it would need to do so from a vantage point, as the muscles in its limbs were unsuitable to help it with powered flight. Rather, Yi Chi was a glider, using its wing membranes to float to safety, 
or to drift from tree to tree in search of food. Yi Qi's wingspan measured roughly 60 centimeters or 24 inches across, and in life it would have weighed no more than 380 grams or 0.84 pounds. This lightweight build would have helped it to stay aloft, although it typically didn't need to glide very far. It lived in a closely packed woodland in the late Jurassic of what would one day become China. This dense, unspoilt network of towering plants provided safety for this tiny draconic dinosaur as it searched for insects amongst the branches. It lived in a humid world, one that was thick with ferns, conifers, and ginkgos. There is only a single Yi Qi fossil known to science, and it was unearthed in China's Chaoji Shang Formation which sits within the country's Hebei and Liaoning provinces. The fossil itself is not only very well preserved, but most of the skeleton as far as we know is present in the specimen. The rocks in which it was found date to around 159 million years ago and have revealed the animal's skull, neck vertebrae, limbs and elements of the torso. This has given scientists a great insight into how the animal lived and behaved over time. The fossil was discovered by Wang Jianrong, a farmer in 2007. He noticed the unusual bones in the rocks of a local quarry and sold the fossil to the Shandong Tianyu Museum of Nature. Zhu Xing, the man who has named more dinosaur species than any other paleontologist described the fossil in 2015. Its name means strange wing in Mandarin, and is also the shortest scientific name ever assigned to a dinosaur. Yi Qi's world contained a multitude of small animals, just as you'd expect to find in subtropical forests of today. Pterodactyloid and anurognathid pterosaurs would have hawked through the air after insects, while bird-like Paravian dinosaurs, such as Anchionis and Eosinopteryx, perched alongside it in the trees. Very early mammals lived here too, yet they were already showing signs of becoming adapted and derived. Arboro Haramaya, for example, was a fellow glider, using a basic membrane of skin to drift from tree to tree in search of food. On the ground, one of the largest animals of the Chaoji Shan formation skulked through the undergrowth in search of suitable leafy browsing material. Tian Yu Long, a heterodontosaurid covered in filament like structures that measured just 70 centimeters or 27 and a half inches long. Jumping forward in time to 120 million years ago, we find ourselves once more in the woodlands of China, yet ones that are filled with a very different community of creatures. We are in the early Cretaceous, specifically the Jiaofutang formation of Liaoning province. The trees here are true towers, conifers stretching high into the air interspersed by small, fast-moving jets of black. These little shadows darting through the treetops are dinosaurs, Microraptor Gui, a species of highly derived dromaeosaur. This little animal is a relative, albeit a very distant one, of the likes of the Velociraptor, Utahraptor, Pyroraptor, and Atrociraptor, amongst others. But despite the connection to these reputable predators, Microraptor was roughly the same size as Yi Qi, being almost indistinguishable in both length and wingspan from many modern perching birds. What makes Microraptor most unusual is that all four of its limbs helped it to glide through the early Chinese forests. Its four limbs were covered in flight feathers well developed to help it catch the air and to keep itself aloft, while its hind limbs provided extra support. On its legs, flight feathers were attached to the upper foot bones. Surprisingly, Microraptor may have been able to lift itself up off the ground independently using its limb muscles 
and take to the skies as a powered flyer. Some studies have supported this, which indicated that Microraptor may have been able to leap into the air or to take off from a running start. Others though have argued that Microraptor was in fact purely a glider and could not freely take off unless it was already situated at a high vantage point. Either way, this animal would have been well suited to an arboreal life amongst the treetops and was likely a capable climber too, although it would have been somewhat ungainly and awkward as it hopped about on the ground. Perhaps even more amazingly, scientists actually know what colour Microraptor's feathers were thanks to the presence of tiny pigment cells preserved in its fossils. The Microraptor was covered from head to toe in feathers, much like a modern bird, with long tail feathers trailing behind it as it travelled through the air. These feathers were a glossy iridescent black all over. In the right light, Microraptor would have shone in vibrant hues of blue, green and purple just like the tail feathers of a modern magpie. These pigment cells, also known as melanosomes, are not unique to the Microraptor and have also been discovered in everything from Jurassic birds to Cretaceous ankylosaurs. The number of dinosaurs whose colours are known to science are limited, but hopefully this will change as more discoveries are made. Remaining in China, but travelling back once more to the Jurassic, we meet Epidexipteryx Hui, a relative of Yi Qi that measured more than 25 centimetres in length. Like Yi Qi, this tiny theropod had long arms and legs and would have been covered in feathers. It is, in fact, one of the earliest known examples of feathers appearing on a dinosaur in the fossil record. Like Yi Qi, Epidexipteryx also possessed the membranous wing structures that may have helped it to glide from tree to tree, but it has also been depicted as travelling across the ground. Epidexipteryx is a highly unusual little dinosaur. Its teeth were restricted to only the front half of its jaws and were angled forwards. Only Machiacosaurus, a late Cretaceous carnivore from Madagascar, has been found to have a similar setup with its teeth. The tail of Epidexipteryx was angled upwards towards its tip, with a series of unusual vertebrae that may have connected to display feathers. In paleo art, these feathers are often depicted as being extremely long and may have been used in elaborate communication signals or in mating rituals. The type specimen, named in 2008, is thought to belong to a sub-adult dinosaur. The name was given to honour paleontologist Hu Yaoming, known for his work on ancient Chinese mammals, while Epidexipteryx roughly translates to display feather. In China, the animal is colloquially referred to as Hu Shi Yaolong, also known as Hu's displaying dragon. It's hard to picture a non-avian dinosaur that was the size of a sparrow, but that's exactly what our next tiny Mesozoic dragon was. A relative of both Yi Qi and Epidepteryx, Scansoriopteryx was an arboreal theropod that also possessed a membranous gliding wing on each of its arms. Its third finger was elongated, which may have helped to support the membrane at one end of the limb but there is, as of yet, no evidence of a long styliform bone to support the membrane. Scansoriopteryx was named in 2002 when its remains were obtained from private fossil dealers. As such, scientists do not know exactly where in China this animal had lived, but the Daohu Go formation of Inner Mongolia is the most likely spot. Like Yi Qi, this animal was alive in the late Jurassic, specifically between 165 to 156 million years ago. The ornamentation of Scansoriopteryx's tail is well preserved, 
and this dinosaur likely used its elongated tail feathers to display to members of the same species. The tail ended in an elaborate fan of feathers, which may have been brightly coloured in life, used to pass signals through a flock or to attract a partner. Like other Scansoriopterygids, this animal was covered in feathers entirely, except likely its wing, which, like Yi Qi, may have been another gliding membrane. Scansoriopteryx was, despite its size, likely incapable of flight, but it would have been able to make quick getaways through the dense forest when chased by a potential predator, or if food was sighted on a neighbouring tree. As Scansoriopteryx's forelimbs were much larger than its hind limbs, scientists have suggested that its arms played a huge role in keeping the animal safe throughout its life. When in danger, it would have easily been able to scramble to safety up the trunk of a tree, perhaps using its digits as grasping foraging tools to find insects to eat. Moving back to the early Cretaceous of China, our final stop on today's prehistoric tour, it sees us meeting an unusual arboreal theropod, which unlike the other animals we've met on this list, was likely an active hunter of vertebrates, potentially including other dinosaurs. Discovered and named in 1999, Sinornithosaurus was determined to be a dromaeosaur, a relative of the Microraptor, and a resident of neighbouring forests. Like the Microraptor, Sinornithosaurus is known to have been covered in a layer of feathers, but the colour has not been preserved in the fossil record. A study conducted in 2010 indicated that its feathers may have been mixed shades of dark black and red, but further investigation is needed to say for certain. While wings were present on this dinosaur's limbs, it could not fly. It may have been capable of gliding for short distances, but it was also considerably larger than the likes of the Microraptor, at just over a metre in length. Sinornithosaurus revolutionised dinosaur ecology in 2009, when M. Pu Gong and his team proposed that it may have had a venomous bite. Gong pointed out the presence of what appeared to be elongated fang-like teeth in its upper jaws, with grooves that ran down the edges that could have been cavities for storing and injecting venom into its prey. They proposed that Synornithosaurus may have pursued prey before delivering a single fatal bite, which took time to take effect. This may not be the case in reality, however. In 2010, Federico Giannaccini published a contrasting paper, pointing out that the grooved teeth are not unique to Synornithosaurus, and that the proposed fangs were teeth that had simply been ejected from their sockets during the fossilization process. Gong himself reassessed his 2009 study and agreed with Giannaccini. It is unlikely that this dinosaur was in any way venomous, but with sharp teeth, and a sickle-shaped claw on its hind limbs, it would have no doubt been a skillful hunter. While our prehistoric dragons are not the gigantic monsters which folklore has led us to know and love, they were awe-inspiring animals nonetheless. As these animals, resembling both birds and reptiles, darted through the treetops after their prey. It surely would have been hard for any theoretical time traveller not to liken them to wyverns and worms of mythology. With tapering tails and membranous wings, perhaps these folkloric beings are more rooted than we might think in the facts and realities of these tiny prehistoric animals.